Hello and welcome to another blog from a very messy engine bay. I've got the Vetus coupling apart at the moment, but that's uh, another job for another blog. This week's blog is about replacing the backing plate on one of the stanchion posts. So we've had some water ingress from the, the foot of the stanchion post here, not just into the tow rail, but into the cupboards. So I mean, we've lost quite a lot of books that were kind of stored in one of the little alcoves in the aft cabin there. Um, I think what's happened is over the years it, it's moved a little bit and cracked the gel coat and some water's got in there but the steel plate isn't actually stainless steel and so when a little bit of moisture gets in there it swells and uh, cracks the gel coat. Um, why they didn't put a, a stainless steel backing plate in I have no idea. Basically have to gouge it out, take it out and then hope, probably replace it. So this is a job that started off in the boatyard. It was supposed to be a quick job, but it extended several weeks later into the marina once we left the boatyard, when I realised how much work was actually involved. So I've managed to get hold of um, a cross-section drawing of, of the uh, tow rail, um, and there's some backing plates just underneath. Um, I thought they were embedded in the fiberglass, but it doesn't look like it on the diagram. But I need to tear away the headlining and the cupboards um, to get to it, which is easier said than done because it's really glued down in there. Um, it's a, a thing about amyls that they put this carpeted inlay in all the cupboards and I think it's got to do with condensation, that it soaks up the condensation and then releases it um, slowly so you don't get the, the, the wetness in, in lockers. Um, when you want to get to the hull for any reason like this, you've got to tear away that headlining. In the hollow of the tow rail I can feel a, a conduit, which is a bit worrying, um, and I think I can feel the backing plate but there's no nuts in there or bolts that I can uh, I can find so uh, I think it is uh, glassed in which is uh, not good news really because uh, it means I've got to grind it out. So for the backing plate for the stanchion post, I start off with thinking maybe stainless. And stainless, if it hasn't got contact with the open air and it gets wet, it acts exactly the same as mild steel really. It'll just, it'll just rust and start to swell and we're back to the same problem. So uh, the next best thing was getting some bronze bar and, and embedding that in. But apart from the fact that bronze is uh, stupidly expensive, it's really hard to get hold of in New Zealand. I tried everywhere. Um, and the nearest I came, uh, something called architectural bronze, which is quite, it's got quite a lot of uh, zinc content, which again is, is not brilliant in uh, in marine environments. And then uh, I was on the uh, AML Facebook group, and uh, uh, Bill Keeney, one of the uh, the experts on on the uh, group, he advised getting something called G10. Now I'd never heard of G10 before, um, but it's an epoxy resin sheet, and it's way way cheaper than uh, than bronze. Yeah, so uh, it's just arrived, and this is it. First thing I notice, it's really heavy, um, and you've got to treat it more like metal than plastic. So you've got to use sort of metal tools like. Uh, blades and uh, grinders to cut it um, and it's the same material that's used in circuit boards um, to make it really sort of rigid and thin. It's got very little UV resistance so you can't use it kind of uh, on, on the deck but as I said it's going to be embedded inside so it's going to be all right. It's used in the making of daggers and knives as well and I found this smaller piece on a, a knife making hobbyist website. So I've never worked with G10 before so uh, I've heard it's quite nasty stuff to work with um, and if it's anything like fiberglass then it, then it is you know you get lots of uh, really sort of scratchy dangerous dust so obviously I'm doing it outside it was a bit melty more than it, uh, metal is um, and a bit sticky as well but uh, so it, was, it wasn't too bad I only need one pair like that so I've got three pair but it didn't produce half as much heat as you would with uh, cutting metal um, and I've heard that that it kind of dissipates heat quite quite quickly it, it doesn't carry an electric current as well so it's kind of good for galvanic corrosion um, applications as well uh, but you can see how tough it is I mean you can see what, what it's done to the blade there and that was a nearly new blade and all I've done is cut those six pieces out yeah not too bad to work with tough but not, not unworkable so I've just cut this out of a milk bottle and uh, it's just basically to go underneath the, the repair. Um, so if any resin drips down, it's not gonna sort of fall into the cupboard. It's just there as a kind of a construction aid really. So it's a bit of a, a tricky job. I'm just cordoning off the area just to hold the dust down because I'm gonna have to start grinding on the fiberglass pretty soon. So the rule of thumb is um, it's a 12 to one gradient from when you're doing the repair. So um, I've got nine mil depth of fiberglass to, uh, to put on. So then I need to, from that, I need to measure out 9 times 12, which is 108 mil, so 110 mil, more or less. So I've measured it out and drawn a, a rough line of where I need to grind that gradient down um, to where the plates are going to be. So 
so the plate I'm gonna just rest on that that uh, scratchy little bit of fiberglass that was left after I ground out the first time in hindsight I would have used a thicker piece of G10 the piece I used was about 6 mil, but I should have gone for about a 10 mil because in reality, the backing plate actually sat a bit lower than the thickness of the gel coat. I think a piece of G10 would have saved me a lot of unnecessary extra layering. Because this is quite a, a complicated job because it's like very three dimensional and I'm not going to be able to kind of form fiberglass around a three dimensional shape perfectly. So I think I'm just going to do top first, let it set, and then I'll start working in onto the sides. I always prefer to get the uh, sort of small kits to do these jobs because inevitably it's always small jobs that you've got to do um, and if you open a, a sort of a big pot of epoxy and hardener um, and then put it back then you come back to it six months later and it's actually gone off. I got those uh, plates put in place and uh, I've left them overnight so they can go nicely dry. I've cut up some chop strand mat um, and what I'm going to do is make a filler with it and just fill in those kind of gaps, those, those deep undulations and the actual holes. Create a more smooth subsurface so I can start laying the mat on top of it. As I say, it's a bit of a tricky job because it's all very three dimensional. First of all, I'm going to kind of sort of fair the underneath to kind of like give it a very smooth base layer so I can kind of add the, the mat on top. I'll start with the top layer and then let that dry and then I'll do the side layer. Something I'm trying that I've never tried before as well, this uh, peel ply stuff which is uh, resistant to epoxy and what you do is you compress the fiberglass and what's supposed to happen is the epoxy kind of rises up through it and collects on the top and then you just peel it off afterwards because it, uh, it doesn't actually stick to the epoxy. And the other thing it's supposed to do is um, when you peel it off it leaves a textured layer so you don't have to actually have to sand between each layer. It's, it like self keys the layer below it um, so when you take it off it's already keyed for the next layer. And then it was just a matter of laying up the mat. I lost count of how many layers I actually put on but it must have been at least 9 or 10. To be honest, a lot of boat maintenance work is really tedious, so I get through a lot of audio books, or I use it as a teaching opportunity for the kids. I'm just putting fiberglass on the um, tow rail. It's wavy like that, so we're just putting it in all of the dips. Yes, all right. So a lot of shaping was necessary along the way. So now I've got a nice sort of smooth finish to it and it's almost there. Shaped nicely, the matting is very solid. Um, but now what I want to do is um, just put some epoxy filler over the top just to even out some of those minor little indentations um, before I actually put the final layer of uh, gel coat on. So that epoxy filler's gone off now and it's rock hard and it's actually smoothed out those lumps and bumps and uh, filled in a few gaps. So now I'm just going to sand it down with some 40 grit and then uh, I'm going to give it a clean up. And the reason I'm doing it with 40 grit is the flow coat that I'm going to put over it is polyester based. So it's not going to form a chemical bond with the epoxy. So I've got to kind of make a physical bond which means I've got to key that uh, epoxy layer really well. So it's not technically a gel coat, it's a, it's a polyester resin designed for painting on rather than sort of casting on. Talking to the guy in the channel and uh, he says he's had plenty of success with it on uh, epoxy products so I'm going to give it a try. So thanks to Dean from All Marine in Vangaray for all his help and advice on this job. So the next thing I'm going to do is try and get a, a colour match. Um, the animals are kind of this off-white creamy colour so I've got some uh, brown and yellow pigment 
So uh, there, there is no scientific way of doing this, you just have to do it by eye. So I'm going to use this as my kind of reservoir for adding coats later on, so I'll tip it into a, a mixing pot, then add the hardener, um, and then carry on. I'm going to say it's pretty close. I'm going to tip about half of this back in here. So this will be the first coat. So this time I'll put six drops of the brown and two drops of the yellow because uh, the last layer was, was too light. For 100 millilitres of flow coat. To be honest, I was way too timid with the dyes on this job and it took me a while to darken down over three or four layers to an amyl type shade. And even then it was a bit too light for my liking. So the other thing I've got to contend with is these little black insects that are all over the place and as soon as you start painting they just land on it and then and you can't get them off. So the only way I can do it is to sand it off later. So just finishing off now, I've got to tap those bolt holes. Um, I'm going to do an M7 actually, then uh, tap it with an M8. Because it's not metal so it doesn't need kind of some real good grinding in it, it just needs kind of a, a gentle screw in there. The other thing is I've got to be really careful down here because there's a gas pipe that runs under the, under the tow rail and it's kind of covered in a PVC pipe but, so I can feel it but I've just got to be extra careful when I'm drilling through it, I don't push too hard. Any gel coat job, um, I always finish off with a little bit of a countersink um, and that just stops any creeping cracks coming from the, uh, the sort of the sharp edge. Um, it just kind of gently rounds that edge off. It also lets the Sikaflex kind of just bed in there a little bit better, so it gives it a nice watertight seal. So I had to buy this special tap set, one that uh, the handle slides through because, it's, uh, because I'm right near the stanchion post and I can't do a full 360 turn with a, a traditional uh, sort of T-shaped tap set. Um, so I've got this one that kind of slides through and you can kind of give it a 180 degree turn and then slide the handle back through again. Put the screws in. Luckily, they were lined up. There was kind of like a little, sort of a millimeter out, but it didn't really matter because it kind of it made a bite of that a little bit better. Um, and so now, all I've got to do is do the sanding. So I'm going to be sanding with uh, some some 240 grit, then 400 grit, and then some 600 grit. But as that's cosmetic, I'm going to kind of push that down the uh, the jobs list for now, and then move on to a more important job, and then I'll come back to later. I mean, the good thing now is even if we do get some water penetration, it's not going to matter that much because uh, there's nothing in there to go rusty and nothing to swell and crack the gel coat anymore. That job took way longer than I ever thought it would, um, just building up those layers of fiberglass, but uh, it's a good solid job now, so I can move on. If you did find this video useful and you're the type of person who likes to return a favour, you can now buy me a beer by using YouTube's new thanks button, which you'll find below this video. So thanks for watching and a special thanks to our patrons who really keep us going. So if you'd like to help with our blogging efforts on this channel and our Mothership Sailing channel, just check out the links to Patreon or PayPal in the description below. Or check out the crew shirts and mugs in our merch store.